Well, good day, everybody. Methodist Dave here. I told you we're gonna be doing different stuff on this channel. And if and after these trucks go by, because I, I live near a highway here, uh, what we're looking at here is a desk that I'm redoing. This was my father's desk, and it used to be painted black. And uh, the finish was all coming off, and he always said he wanted to strip it down. Well, I was only planning on, on uh, stripping it down a little bit and then repainting it black so that it would look like you know the desk that my dad always had uh, this is a Shelbyville desk company I believe this comes from the mid 50s uh, looked at some pictures online and uh, there was a, a 1955 version that looks like this when it was all black uh, that had been painted by somebody so it was the natural finish they painted it black and over the years the black paint has come off and worn off and so, like I said, I was, gonna, I was going to uh, strip it down and paint it and do a really quick and dirty job. Uh, but when I started taking the wood off here, uh, I could see that there is some beautiful wood underneath here. Now, I have stripped the paint and finish off of this desk already. And what I'm using is this chemical right here, Citrus Strip. I got this at the Home Depot. I used to use zip strip all the time and I didn't find any and I saw this stuff and I thought wow that's really good so what we're gonna do is if I can set this up here and show this what I'm doing that's the black and you see that that's that's the black that it was and you can see the finish peeking out right underneath there uh, so kind of like it's hiding. I believe it's walnut. And I just want to see here, make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing here. Yep. So I take this citrus strip and you just apply it to the finish. Put that on there nice and heavy. This cleans up really nice with water. Uh, it's made out of citrus products. Uh, it says there's no harmful fumes, no harmful chemicals here. This is like a really eco-friendly product it purports to be. So I'll apply to where, because I'm, I'm only working on the face here. I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to do the entire thing, you know, I'm not going to get the sides because quite frankly all that stuff is inside and no one ever sees it and it's a lot of work, extra work, extra time. Now you let this sit a good half hour. And I've got this piece here, this is another door, and I did this about half an hour ago. And I have two scrapers here. I got my, my flat scraper with a flat edge here, and I have a curved scraper here because these edges here along the outside of the desk, these are curved. So uh, we're... We're going to take that, and you can see, I'm just going to use this and work this away, and this just comes away like butter. Try to get as much of this away as possible off this curve. I'm taking away the paint, and I'm also trying to take away the finish. So 
So I'm scraping down to the bare wood. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this is walnut underneath here. The, uh, the desks on the internet, the Shelbyville desks, uh, seem to generally be walnut. Walnut's a, a nice furniture cut wood. Uh, you find it in a lot of bedroom furniture and things like that. You've got the uh, curve straped out here pretty good. Put that scraper there and get my my flat boy here. And I just take away that old finish and the wood just jumps right out of you. That'd be the bonus on the video if you actually catch me falling down. So clean away some of the build up there. Then I'm going to go to the edge here, and scrape along the edge carefully because it's a little flat right here at the edge. And my curved scraper is not good at that. I'm taking a little bit of wood away too. I'm going to lose that. It's really hard when you're refinishing something. I mean, the wood is old and soft for the most part. Uh, if you're not careful, you can like gouge. You want to use a sharp scraper. I'd already replaced the blade on this here flat scraper because I, you know, as I showed you, you have the desk. I've taken all the, the finish off of that desk. Let's get some of the sides here of the drawer. Grab the bottom here. You want to be as careful as you can, but if you've got a sharp scraper, that'll just like take everything off. But like I said, by the same token, you want to be careful that you don't dig into the wood too much. Clear some of this gunk off. And some of this like whiteness here, that's actually the, the shellac or varnish, whatever was the finish was. Some of it comes off real easy. Some of this comes off pretty hard. And easy. Real nice along the edge here. Try to get as much of the paint and finish off as I can because the less I have to sand, the better. But you got to be careful that you, like I said, that you don't gouge into the wood here. So I think. difficult to finish is. One of the things I'm going to do is I, this one's all right. Take 
to live on this side, and that's okay. Some of my desks, my drawers here, the dovetails uh, have come loose, and I've had to re-glue them. Okay, so I think I think we got this one finished off here pretty good. So as we can see, the we scraped that off, and let's go over and take a look at the desk here. Now I have done the sides. I'm I'm not done getting down with the final sanding, but well, I've got my random orbital sander here. And this goes around in an oblong circle. So this is good for finishing. If this were just a spin in a circle, it would dig into the wood, uh, but it goes in a random orbit path. So this way I can get nice, I can sand this desktop without gouging in. And when you're using this, and where am I? Set this here, we can look at that. I'm using three different sanding pads here. 80 grit, 120, and 220. You start with the 80 grit. That'll get the rest of the, the varnish off the top, take away the paint that's left behind, anything big. And then you go back over it with a 120, and that takes out the sanding marks from the 80 grit. You'll finish up with a 220. And if you can get a higher um, sanding count, like a 300, That'll give you a smoother finish, too. But we're going to uh, sand on the desk here. And I take a look here. You can see that I have lined up my holes on the random orbital sander here. There's holes in the sandpaper and there's holes in the sanding pad. And that allows it to, to suck the dust away. So we're going to make sure you line them up when you do this. Otherwise... Your, your sanding pad, it doesn't take it away. So we're gonna start out with the 80 grit.
are not going to bore you incessantly watching me sanding this desk. But I think you can see right now the difference. All of a sudden now you have like wood. I'm coming down to wood and you can see here uh, that there's still varnish here on the top of the desk and I think you can see the transition. This is sanded and this isn't sanded yet. And this is shiny here because this is still varnish that didn't come off on the scrape. And uh, it's also revealing things about the wood. And I got a little black line right here. It's a little black line. I'm pretty sure that's a cigarette burn. Somebody had a cigarette that fell down here. And it's got this little black line here. And it doesn't come off real quick. Uh, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm suspecting that's a cigarette burn. Uh, there's some lines here from somebody uh, maybe with a knife or, or something heavy uh, making scratches in the desk. And the paint went into that little groove there and filled that groove in. So this is paint from when it was finished up. So whenever it had been, before it had been painted, it had these marks put in. And then when they painted over it, the paint goes into that groove and when I scraped it it didn't come off because it's in the groove and as I'm sanding it it's not coming off so it's in there pretty deep so I'll, I'll sand it with my 80 grit take the whole top down and bring it to the wood that it's at right now and then I'll go back with a 120 grit and I'll sand these heavy sand marks out and then I'll go back with my 220 and finish it up nicely. Here's a gouge in the top of the finish. I got a, a couple gouges in the front of the desk that the uh, that the laminate has come off. It's delaminating, so uh, not much I can do about that. I tried to to mix up some sand, some sawdust and glue and and fill in the holes, and uh, it didn't work the way I wanted it to. Uh, it's not going to be a perfect desk. This means more to me that it was my dad's desk. He bought it uh, when my brother was born back in 1967 uh, for his plumbing business. And my mom says, well, he only paid $100 for it. It wasn't that much money. It was $100. And I'm like, Mom, uh, in 1967, $100 was a lot of money. Uh, people were making 75 bucks a week. I know that in, in 1981, my first job for First National State Bank, I worked in the computer department, I made $119 a week. So, I mean, this was more than a week's salary. So, I've seen these desks going for $1,500, uh, up to $2,000 for the older ones on the internet, uh, on eBay. So, it, it's, not a, it's not a cheap piece of furniture. It's a really nice, heavy piece of furniture. Um, again, like I said, it was my dad's desk. And that means more to me than, than pretty much anything, that it's my dad's desk. So I, I just want to spend some time on it, making it look good again and uh, fixing it up so I, I can put it in my office and keep that connection with my dad. Uh, if you've got some heirloom furniture, you know, look it over. You know, the stuff they make today, it's particle wood. I've got... I've got some Ikea, my, my kids love Ikea furniture and they make some nice stuff, but quite frankly, you know, it's flat pack, it's, it's particle board. I've got uh, a whole bunch of uh, bookcases that are, that are flat packs too. And, you know, sometimes they go together nicely and sometimes they don't go together nicely. And that little can that you have to turn, you know, maybe that digs out or breaks and then I have to nail it together and, you know, it's all good now while it's in place, but move it around a little bit. <clears throat> My dad bought a, a cedar bookcase 45 years ago, and I have it. And that thing weighs like five pounds, or about 10 pounds really. Uh, the wood is so dried out, but it's cedar, and it's sturdy. None of the shelves sag. They're all you know, level straight, and it holds a ton of books. And it's a really nice bookcase. That's furniture. That's things that last. And a lot of the stuff you get today, it doesn't last. So when you see this old furniture, and especially if it doesn't look good, don't worry about that. A little bit of citrus strip, some sanding, strip it down. You can either paint it 
and make it look nice painted or, or maybe you want to take it down to the wood. I think once you put the citrus strip on it and see what the wood looks like, you might be surprised that, it, you know, it might be cherry, you know, or it it'll, it'll, could be maple, it could be mahogany. Who knows what's underneath it, especially if it's been painted. And if it's made out of wood, you know, you can fix it too. If, if, it, if the joints have come apart, glue them up, uh, put some nails in them, put them back together, and you'll have a sturdy piece of furniture that'll last you a really long time. But uh, uh, we're gonna end this right now because I have to go back and I have to finish stripping my other my other drawer that you watched me put the finish on. And I've got uh, the, the little wings that I've got to strip them down. And uh, I've got to do a whole lot more sanding on the top here. And I know you don't want to watch me sand. So come back later and we'll, we'll come back to the desk when I'm ready to stain it. And I think we're going to go with a walnut stain with a walnut finish. I believe it's walnut. And we're going to go with that in a nice golden walnut. We'll, we'll stain it up. And then we'll come back and we'll we'll see it as I finish it, and uh, and I hope to in the near future show you the finished product, you know. And it might not be perfect, but I, I think it's going to look really good, and I'm going to be really glad to be able to use this in my work, and uh, and have that connection with that. This was my dad's desk, and it's been in the family for over 50 years, and uh, they don't they certainly don't make them like this anymore. So, uh, good luck, God bless you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.